I'm proud that I'm from there and I wouldn't have it any other way. But at this point in my life, South Florida is the place to be. New York, New York. New York. One thing that's great right now is that the best are fighting the best in the women's division. And I think that's what's changing the game. And the men are not. I, I didn't say that. No, I'm we'll, saying we'll, that. I'm a guy. I can we'll say, say that it. shit. We'll and say the that. men are not. This is fun. Well, yeah. and, then, and then you get the picture. And you're like, damn, damn I, I look good. good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for always supporting me. Um, I have like the greatest followers ever. I don't get heckled or anything. Nobody ever says anything bad to me on my comments. So let's keep it that way. But um, thank you guys for always supporting me and my friends and family. And if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram at Christina Cruz Box. Welcome back to another episode of Van Steel. Thank you all for viewing and subscribing. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. The best is yet to come. Let's not waste no time and get right into it. We've been dying to have a female fighter on the podcast, and we finally did. She has two world medals. She's an eight-time USA national champ with over 200 amateur fights. And now 4-0 as a pro, we have Christina Cruz. Ooh, the chat baby in the Hello building. Guys, thank you guys for having me. Thank you for coming. We had to rush this one. I didn't, I didn't forget about the introducing of us. It's all about you. Right the champ. Right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've been dying to have a girl for real. Like, no, oh, yeah? Nobody... So it's just, I'm the first? You're the first. Oh, You're the first. You're okay. the first female. The first I like female. it. I like it. From the looks of it, probably the only one. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, thank you for coming. I know that drive is a little far. Yeah, especially when you guys uh, gave me the wrong address. He gave you the wrong address. <laughs> Blame it on him. That's a lie. That's <laughs> such a lie. I even I even gave her my lo my like current location. And, and I'm gonna save you. You even gave her your, the wrong number the of your phone number. The wrong phone number and then the wrong address. What's up with you, bro? You're on my side. No, of my side. Like, Come on, <laughs> you wanna go take a seat over there, bro? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so let's get into it a little bit. Um, you were raised in New York, uh, Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. But you're Puerto Rican ethnicity. Mm hmm That's So cool. born and raised in Hell's Kitchen by a Puerto Rican family. My raised by my grandparents with uh, raised by my dad with the help of my grandparents. Um, with two brothers, you know, just running around the neighborhood playing sports, fighting things like that. <laughs> you got that Puerto Rican like swag to you. Oh you yeah, know? you can see it. The okay, New Yorker good. Puerto Rican swag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got that swag with the kids. And, you know, she, she got it. She got it going. She, she look like a superstar. Uh, thank well, she you. is a superstar, man. Yeah, facts, facts, facts. Shit. Yeah, yeah, but you could be the part and not look the part. That's she, true. She has both. So. True. So that, that's what I meant by it. Let me put him in the spot, bro. But look, <laughs> he's not, I'm gonna put man. I'm gonna put you on the spot okay. real quick. You're living now in Fort Lauderdale, South yes. Florida. You mm -hmm. had to choose South Florida or New York. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay, so I love where I'm from. I I'm proud that I'm from there, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But at this point in my life, South Florida is the place to be. New York, no, I heard New York. Yes, yes, but I'm always back and forth. So like every two months, I'm back home. But right. um, my training's here, and I've just created my life here for the past two and a half years. So. Um, just bought my first property here in Florida, so I'm really excited and just looking forward to keep building here. It's super cool. I mean, all jokes aside, home is home, though. Right. You know what right. I mean? Right. I love it. Um, and all my family's back home. It's a two-hour flight, so. What yeah. do you miss from home? Um, probably the everything's just easy, easier access. Um, it's very convenient to live in New York City. You don't need a car. If you want a cheeseburger at three in the morning, you mm. just go right downstairs to the diner. There's always a corner store open. Um, just things like that. Uh, and then just my family and friends that I grew up with. She's like, I don't have to drive an hour and a half for an episode. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the weather here is beautiful, though. Yes. Year around. Oh, my God. I love it. I live right off the beach. And um, every day I wake up, I just feel blessed. Do you miss the snow? No. No? Not I, at all? I don't miss it at all. Um, I watched on the news that when it, whenever it was snowing back home and I'm like, yeah, it looks pretty. In your bathing suit. <laughs> In my right? bathing It looks pretty, but I don't miss it. Um, yeah, I'm I'm all about the beach life right now. For sure. How was life growing up in New York? It was fun. It was hard, but it was fun. Um, we grew up fairly poor. Um, my mom was kind of in and out of my life growing up. She did a lot of time in jail. So I was raised by my dad and my grandparents. Um, and we didn't have much. We lived in a one-bedroom apartment with two brothers and my grandparents. So we never had that space. And, I mean, that's very typical for growing up in New York City, especially in Manhattan. There's no houses. It's all apartments. Um, and during the time, early 90s, House Kitchen was a horrible neighborhood, horrible neighborhood. Um, but 
I don't know. We made it happen. It was always fun. I grew up with my brothers. I know growing up poor, it could be hard, but when you're sleeping on the living room couch with your brothers and you guys are having fun all night and cracking jokes and bothering each other, it's a time of your life when you're that age. And um, I just, I'm blessed to have grown up with a, a good friends in my life and things like that. So I wouldn't change it for anything. I mean, you did a pretty good job, or they did a pretty good job <laughs> with you. So you're doing yeah. you're doing well. Thank you. Um, so you stated you moved to Florida for the past two years. Yeah. And you've been in uh, with Javier Centeno and Xander the whole time you've been here. Yeah. So I was actually forced to move here because of the pandemic. Mm. We couldn't train in New York City for over a year. Um, wow. now they're already strict over there. Yeah. And I once the pandemic started, right away I just knew I had to go somewhere, and I was in between. New York and Puerto Rico, because I was on the Puerto Rican national team. So I was kind of back and forth. I was in Puerto Rico when the pandemic mm -hmm. started, and I came back home to New York, and everything was shut down, and I was like, okay, I can't live this life where I'm not progressing in my sport. Right. So Florida being one of the only places open, yeah. <laughs> um, I packed my bags. I came for a week first just to ch check it out. I was invited by... Um, one of my teammates on the Puerto Rican national team, Nisa Rodriguez, she was invited by Peter Kahn. And they were like, hey, if you want to come down here and see if you like it. Came down for one week, fell in love with the gym. I told Javier, I'll be back next week with my things. I'm looking for an apartment. And uh, the rest was history. What was the first thing that you fell in love with? When you got here to Miami, what was like, <laughs> whoa, like, what was what was it for you? What Bra was the eye opener? Bra Broward, bro. Broward. Yeah. <laughs> True, Broward. <laughs> yeah. yeah I thought bad. about Miami, though. Um, It was the, like, first place on my list. But being an athlete and just living the lifestyle that I live, I needed a little more peace in my life. So uh, it's Fort Lauderdale for me right now. There's just a lot of distractions here in Miami. Too. Yes. <laughs> a lot of distractions. But I think you have your head up high. I don't think that would get yeah, in the way. I mean, it wouldn't, but just... But still, yeah. It, just in case. Just yeah. in case. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll keep it in mind. <laughs> <laughs> um... I mean, one of the first things, of course, is the weather. But the main thing that drew me here was the environment in the gym. How supportive everyone was and how I, you know, cl clicked with my coaches and clicked with my teammates and things like that. And that's really what pulled me to just move here. You started boxing at 21 years old. Yeah. Uh, Your neighbor, Lucky, I think it was. Yes. He was the one that put you on, right? Yes. So one of the guys from my neighborhood, Lucky Trochet, watched me grow up, Um, played sports with his kids and things like that. And he was bringing his son to a boxing gym. His son was about 12 years old at the time. He's like, Christina, try it out. And I'd be like, no, nah, man, I'm too old for that. <laughs> and every time he would run into me in the park or outside hanging with my friends, like we'd be playing spades or something. And he's like, Christina, you got to come to the gym. I'm like, Lucky, please. I'm not starting boxing at the age of 21. Then one day he was just like, all right. He grabbed me by my arm, threw me in a taxi with him and his son. He paid my first month's dues, bought me my first gloves, <laughs> and was like, you're trying this out. And the second I walked into the gym, I fell in love with it. That's crazy. That's yeah. cool. Are you still in contact with him? Yes, I am. Yeah. Um, we, we talk frequently over text messages. And I'm so grateful for him for pushing me. He knew growing up I was an athlete. I played every sport, like every city sport, ba basketball, baseball, street football, it's whatever a, it's it was. It's in you. It's in you. Exactly. It was always in me. Um, and he just knew I'd be good at it. I, I didn't know I would be that good. <laughs> What was your favorite sport besides boxing at the time? What was um, your main thing? When I started boxing, my, my 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 favorite sport was probably basketball. Growing up, it was baseball and basketball, which I played from like the age of four until the end of high school. Um, played on a base on a baseball team with boys. I was always the only girl on the team. Um, I stopped playing baseball when I was around fourteen because that's when you start to notice the difference between strength and right. things like that. And then in high school, they wouldn't allow me to try out for the boys' team. Yeah. I had to play softball. Um, you weren't you were having she it. She said that's yeah. so disappointed, like <laughs> softball. Like I played for like half a year and it was fun, but it's different. No disrespect to the softball. No, please. I like I love it. And I you know, I played softball in like regular leagues, you know, even like my brother's work leagues, and it's always fun, but at the time I loved baseball so much and right. um yeah, and then I just kind of started focusing on basketball until the end of high school. And then after high school, I wasn't playing any sports. I played probably in, like, some basketball leagues, like street leagues and things like that. And then um, I kind of just stopped playing sports right before I started boxing. So, right. And then 
Yeah, sure. Boxing foam. <laughs> it just took it just took your heart. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I know you stated that as soon as you got there, you fell in love. But what made you say, I'm going to make this my career? I'm going to do this for a living? Uh, it wasn't until after I won my first USA National. So I started boxing like 2006 and I went to nationals in 2007. I only had I had like 10 fights, maybe under 10 fights at the time. And um, my coach at the time, he just threw me in to the tournament. I didn't know how big of a tournament it was. I just knew it was a national tournament. I had to fight four times um, and and I ended up winning. <laughs> um, and then after the fight, it wasn't until like my coach told me, you know, you could just be like four former USA national champions. And I'm like, okay, whatever. He goes, <laughs> you're on Team USA now. I'm like, I was like, what does that mean? He's like, you're going to travel with Team USA now. And I was like, oh okay <laughs> and then and they're from, gonna pay you and they're gonna pay me um and then that's when i started taking it uh se- i took it serious then but that's when i decided yeah, it's, okay uh, this is gonna be my life next level shit. yeah yeah All right, I get it. <laughs> I mean, when you hold the record my bad you hold the record for winning the most new york golden gloves yes what made you stick around amateur boxing so long because to win it so i mean so many years you have to be around that amateur system for a while right I loved the amateurs. I loved what it was about. I loved how you just go in and you come back out. You do, you know, there's no ship talking in between. You just right. do your job day after day after day. Um, so I kind of fell in love with that. I never, ever wanted to go pro. Never. Um, it was just go to the Olympics and then retire. Um, the Olympic dream has been since I was a kid since I was five years old, sitting in front of the TV with my brothers watching the games. I just didn't know what sport it would be. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to be like basketball, but then I (laughs) I stopped growing. (laughs) I I have my older brother, 6'3". So Mm -hmm. at the age of 12, I was already like 5'3". And I, you know... I thought I was going to keep growing, but it kind of just stopped. What happened? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Six, three is pretty big. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've always had the Olympic dream. I just didn't know it was going to be boxing. And then when I found boxing, I was like, okay, this is this is it. This is how I'm going to get there. And then um, pandemic hit. Right. And But pandemic hit and you you made, you made it to the Olympic team for okay. Puerto Rico. So let, let me... Go let's, ahead. Go let's ahead. rewind. Uh, okay, okay, okay. 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 So the first... Um, Olympic trials ever for women was 2012. So that was my opportunity. I went to Olympic trials. I qualified for Olympic trials. I was actually the first female to qualify for Olympic trials. I qualified by earning my spot on the 2011 Pan American team, which also was the first time for women ever. Um, So I earned my spot in Olympic trials. Did good in Olympic trials, but not good enough. I got bronze. Waited to 2016. Waited around another four years. Same result, same result, bronze. Um, bronze again. As far as fighting, um, I don't. I feel like my result should have been better. I felt like the amateur system was not doing me so well. It's really corrupted. Yes, yes. And then 2020 comes around. I'm still on Team USA. Get to Olympic trials again. They changed the process. So now it doesn't matter if you win Olympic trials. Now it matters on how many points you could rack up after making it to the top two in Olympic trials. So I make it to the top two in Olympic trials. I get silver this time, a better result than the last time. Made it to the top two, which means I still have a chance. What they do is they take two of the athletes at the top two and they put you through a training process. Um, In training camp, you get points and then they take you to a competition, international competition, which is the last part of it. So myself and the other girl I was going against, we were like this on points. Um, She beat me in Olympic trials, but then in training camp, I caught up with the points. Um, I did great in sparring, showing up on time, Um, just things like that. That's how they were judging you. That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. But that's pointless. It is. Stupid. But but it's easy for me because I was disciplined. So I was like, okay, this is going to be, I'm going to do this. And then... We get to Bulgaria. They put us on the opposite ends of the bracket so that we could Collide. possibly meet in the finals. So <laughs> she gets a bye the first round. I ended up having to fight. Um, I win my fight, whatever. We'll go to the next round. She wins her fight. We both kept winning. We <laughs> both made it to the finals. <laughs> this funny. is how good 
um, the girls are, though, on Team USA. What that girl was that, by the way? It was Virginia Fuchs, who was also a good friend of mine. Unfortunately, there was only three weight classes at the time, so we had no choice to fight at that weight class. Right. Um, we both make it to the finals, um, beat all these other other all these other countries of the top girls in the world as well. I lose on a split decision to her. <laughs> but did you get robbed? Um, what can you say about that fight? I could say it was really close. Um, I could say I got robbed, but then I could say so. I try to look at things from the outside. Right. Um. At at the moment, it felt like. It wasn't a fair decision, and a lot of other people agreed. Um, but then looking at the fight again, watching it back, I see why they gave it to her, but they could have also given it to me for other factors. Um, I think with the amateur scoring system, I think a lot of the officials are very confused with it. It's, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a system that's always changing and has changed throughout my career, that's for sure, because before it was like the points, just the white part of the gloves had to touch. Right, right, right. Three judges had to score at the same time for it to be one point. It was, uh, But they changed that system to more of a pro system. Yeah. And you could go in there and pity pat someone and they'll score it. They'll score it off aggressiveness, you know right, what I mean? Right, 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 right. But um, whatever, she won. So my chances to go to the Olympics are over. Well, at least I thought. <laughs> <laughs> How was that moment like when you when you got the decision that you didn't? It was so like... heartbreaking. Um, it's so heartbreaking. I was hurt at the moment. I'm someone who, yeah, I, I feel those emotions, but then I'm pretty good at picking up and moving forward. But right away, Puerto Rican national team calls me. Um, they've always wanted me to be on their team, and for reasons of being on Team USA, I just never did, you know? Right. Being on Team USA, you get paid, you get you get everything. Um, there's more luxury to it. Yeah, there's more luxury to it and and things like that. But I, there, there's always been a part of me that wanted to be on the Puerto Rican national team just for my family. It runs in your blood. It runs in my blood. My grandparents raised me. They would have been so proud to see that, you know? Um, but, yeah, so they called me and they're like, hey, we want you to compete at our Olympic trials. So, so when you got that car, you were like, whoa. I like literally like just landed from Bulgaria and then had to get a plane <laughs> and go to Puerto Rico. Um, so I went to Puerto Rico after fighting six times in Bulgaria. So within those two months between Olympic trials of Bulgaria, I fought about almost 14 times. Wow. I was so tired. I just remember wanting to get home to my bed. But then went straight to Puerto Rico and then fought in the finals and beat their top girl and made the Olympic team. But making the Olympic team doesn't mean you go to the Olympics. Yeah. Then you have to qualify internationally. Continentals and all that. Yeah. And then, um, okay, so I made the team. <laughs> was in training camp in Puerto Rico, living there full time, training with the team. And then we were five days out from to leaving to continental qualifiers, which was in Argentina. And then pandemic ended up shutting down Argentina. And they were like, okay, we have to postpone the tournament until later. So I'm like, fine, back to training. <laughs> and then a few days later, they just announced they were, whatever, they weren't going to have the Olympics in 2020. So I had to wait a whole year again for that process, which was so brutal. And that's when I moved to Florida to train with Javier. And then, um, again, that year came around to go to Argentina again. Again, five days before the tournament, Argentina shuts down again. And wow. then the IOC announces we're not going to have an Olympic qualifier for the Americas. They're just going to choose who they want to go. So it kind of put me in a position where I, there was no way I was going. You know, they, they created this protocol or this system that I didn't fall into, even though I was one of the top fighters in the world, just because I didn't go to some tournament like three years ago, I didn't get chosen. Wow. Yeah, which Politics. kind of... Yeah, it's, it's so crazy. It was the first time in Olympic history that our continent didn't allow um, the athletes to qualify fairly for their spot. Oceania, uh, the A Asian Games went on, the European Championships went on. They all got to qualify how traditionally how it's done. Right. We were the only ones that didn't. So a lot of fighters got left out, including myself. A lot of Team USA fighters that you guys know now, Charlie Sheehy. And some other um, fighters, they, they got left out as well. And yeah. for me, it was like, shit, I was training 17 years for this. And it's just not meant for me. So I had to accept it. And I went back to coach. And I was like, coach, I'm retiring now. This is it. He's like, no, 
You're not <laughs> There's retiring. No way. There's no way you can retire. I was like, I'm retiring. I'm done with this. I'm done. Yeah. I've been doing it for. I accomplished everything that I could accomplish. He's like, no, you haven't. You haven't been to the pros yet. <laughs> I want to follow up on that question, but going back to the to to put being you being on the Puerto Rican team and the American team, what are the difference in the systems of the Puerto Rican boxing and American boxing? As far as training or everything all around. Overall, being on the American team, um. I didn't think this at the time, but we're, we're spoiled as athletes, you know? Um, and you don't realize that until you go somewhere else. In Puerto Rico. Yeah, so financially I was covered all the time. Um, whether it was getting our monthly stipend, food paid for, residence paid for, everything was paid for. I didn't have to pull anything out of my pocket, whereas being on the Puerto Rican national team, everything's out of your pocket. Um, you don't. You don't get the monthly stipend that you're getting on Team USA. Some some athletes didn't get any stipend at all. And I think it's one of the reasons why the Olympic program for Puerto Rico, for boxing specifically, is not so successful because it's hard for them to keep their athletes there without turning pro. I mean, sense. yeah, they have every reason not to show up to practice because they got to work and they got to feed their family and they got to pay their bills. Um, so I guess that was a big difference financially. Training is pretty similar. Same. Yeah. Um, just a amateur style boxing or Olympic style boxing training. It's similar all around pretty much. Except when you go to like Europe and they f just fight yeah, different. Weird, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so going back to the question of your trainer, why why wasn't it in your mind of turning professional? It was j I just didn't care about it. I didn't I don't know how I'm still Cuz the money, this. the money's going to be good. Yeah, the fame. Well, the money's good for the males. It's mm. gotten better for women, but it's still nowhere near as you know, of what course. The, and, and, and I'm grateful for what I have now from the pros and what I'm getting now. I'm grateful for it, but it's nowhere near close. And I know it's better than the last generation, but there's still a lot of work to be done. I have a good question. Okay. I'm going to put you on the spot again. Oh, I'm pretty gosh. good at that. <laughs> Come on, man. No, I have to. I have to. I have to. What was tougher, or the sparring and all that, from USA or Puerto Rico? Um, That's hard to say. Right. Um. I think on both sides, the athletes are very talented. Um, I know the training in Puerto Rico might have been a little more work, um, just physically. But as far as like sparring and skill wise, it's pretty even. The five girls who were the other four girls who were on the team with me in Puerto Rico, these girls could fight. Like right, right. you guys don't know about them yet, but you'll see they could fight and they're good and you know. The world just hasn't seen them yet because they didn't get the opportunity, like myself, to go to the Olympics. But um, we had a good team. And the girls on Team USA have always done their thing. They've always held it down for Team USA over the men's team or any other team. So You're really close to Clarissa Shields, right? Yes, I'm close with Clarissa, Michaela, all those girls. How was it like working with her with, with Clarissa Shields? Somebody, you know, training with her. She's a whoa, you know, how she says. But she <laughs> is. How was that experience like it being was, with her? It's fun. Um, She was a lot younger than me at the time when I met her. She was only like 16 years old. She was 17 when she won the 2012 Olympics. Um, mm. So she was one of the youngest, younger athletes on the team. One thing I, I'll say about Clarissa is... I've never seen confidence in a human being the way I see her. <laughs> She's a boat. She's a boat. The confidence level is just another level. And it's not her just saying it. It's her actually believing it and doing yeah. it. Um, so I've never seen anything like that in, a, in another athlete. Um, she's probably the most confident person I've ever met in the ring or in training or just in general <laughs> her belief her belief system is huge you can tell that she but yes. what she says and what she does she believes in it right right and it, it was fun always working you know with them and traveling with them clarissa and i roomed together we used to play pranks on each other all the time <laughs> um things like that you know i mean when you travel with the team for so long you guys kind of become family you know everything about each other you're in the mud together you're you know you're at your highest and your lowest together so we've seen each other during those times so you kind of create that bond right, how does right. it work though are the ladies and 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 the guys together 
Or how, how does how does that like play a part? So I don't know how they have it now, but when I was on it, we trained with the men a lot. Um, sometimes we had set separate sessions, like especially during sparring time. Of course. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, we trained together and we traveled together, except when it was like women's world championships, which was a different date than the men. Right, right. But uh, yeah, we did all travel together all the time. We all lived in the training center at the same time. All trained together, recovered together, everything. Do you remember Errol Spence a lot? Um, yeah, I know so, he was on the team. With so, 20, yeah, so Earl was on the um, team with me back then. Um, he was a great guy. He was really quiet coming up. Um, he but was quiet, yeah. He was quiet. Yeah, he still is. Yeah, so. yeah, he's pretty quiet. Um, just a cool dude, uh, very laid back and, you know, always did his job and would just be so <laughs> laid back and chill. It's pretty cool, too, when you're in the amateurs. I mean, anybody that's on the team is going to be pretty damn good. They're going to yeah. have good skills. So it's pretty cool, though, like, when you know which one is, like, or you have an idea, like, damn, this one might, you know. Yes. Well, one thing I tell you was Shakur. So I've known Shakur since yeah. he was little. <laughs> and I just, like, knew. I just, I would tell him all the time, like, you're going to be one of the greatest. He's got gifted. Yes. Yeah, but you could see that even from not being in the team, just being on the outside, it, you could see yeah, it. Yeah. It's really cool. Watching them come up in the sport and being on the team so long is like watching them graduate, you know? So. Right. It's you being in the team so long, you, you had to fight the same person over and over many times. Who would you say was your biggest viral rival? In, in I've had so many. Um, there was this one girl from Boston who I fought like six times. For some reason, she would always make it to the finals. And every time, her name was Amanda. Every time Amanda she, what? Oh, what's her last name? She's from Boston. Mm. But her name was Amanda. She would okay. always make it to the finals. <laughs> and I'd be like, fuck, I gotta fight you her again. again. <laughs> yeah, she was so tough. She just kept coming forward every time, like, relentlessly. I, I've always... I always won, but the fights were always like, I know tough, yeah, like yeah, tough. Yeah, they were always tough. And I, you know, there's a reason why she made it to the finals all the time. But it was just like, damn, can I find another girl? <laughs> right, that makes sense. Yeah. What's your best memory in, in the amateurs? Ooh, best memory. There's so there's many. A lot. Yes, there's so many. Or oh, one that you like that you cherish a lot. Oh, okay. One that I cherish a lot as an amateur. In twenty twelve, Michaela and I, we were sent to Brazil. Um, to compete in this tournament, but in the tournament we had to represent a, a city in Brazil. So how does that work? Yeah, uh, it was like an invitational. Mm, okay. so there's some invitation. So the Brazilian one of the a team from Brazil from Rio Claro, Brazil, which is in Sao Paulo, mm -hmm. um, invited us over and we got to represent them in tournament. But it wasn't about the tournament. What what made it special it was with the athletes, and a lot of them came from poverty. Um, you know, their stories were very different than ours. And um, we were there for almost a month. So we spent so much time with them. And it was during the holidays, so it was during Thanksgiving. So we, mm. you know, Michaela and I, we weren't with our family. Right. We were with them, and they knew that it was an American holiday. So they wanted to celebrate that holiday with us, right? Mm. And we... They asked us, like, what do you guys do for Thanksgiving? We're like, we draw, like, hand turkeys. We started, like, reminiscing when we were kids. And then we sometimes go around, like, saying what we're thankful for. And they were like, oh, let's do that. <laughs> and um, That's pretty dope. That's yeah, a cool experience. Yeah, it's, it's so dope. When we started, you know, saying what we were thankful for, and then it just turned into, like, a crying fest between wow. everybody because there's – you know their stories were yeah, so, they're so poor and they were so yeah heartfelt and they're so grateful for what they have even though it's not that much and it, it like opened up my mine and Michaela's eyes to how grateful we are for what we have you know so that was probably one of the best trips I went on that's, that's cool yeah. now, you've been all over the place yeah, Bra yeah where have you been to Brazil where oh all over South America for Bulgaria. sure Bulgaria <laughs> <laughs> Kaz Kazakhstan oh for real <laughs> oh that's dope yeah. that's dope that's dope yeah, yeah what has been your favorite my favorite um so I love Brazil was one of my favorite places and then Jeju Island Korea Korea? Yes, it was absolutely beautiful. You lost there. me with the first part. All I yeah, understood I was Korea. Korea. Yeah, <laughs> Je Jeju Island, which is a small, which is a small island in, in Korea. Um, we had world championships there. I think we were there for about two or three weeks, and it was just a beautiful island. I like. I never seen anything like it. They compared the people there. They like, oh, it's comparable to like Hawaii. Um, but <laughs> one unique thing about their island is <laughs> they're big on like fertility, and um. 
So they had these statues called, they call them grandpas, but they're, they're penis statues. Mm. Oh. <laughs> well, okay. They're everywhere. They're all over. Like the, 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 He's over here cracking up. <laughs> What's the meaning to it, the, the, though? The, the, the men have to compete there, too? Like, yeah. Oh, no. It was just the woman's turn. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, no. They were like, fuck that. But it, <laughs> it's to bring luck to fertility and love and things like that. But they were like penises with faces. Oh, damn. like Kinda little weird. cute okay. faces on it. They had um, she was like cute faces. <laughs> <laughs> they had this place called Loveland where it's like a outdoor museum, and it's just like huge, huge statues of penises and vaginas <laughs> everywhere. And we were just we were picture crazy there. Gotcha. So oh, I'm but... assuming you got to be 18 and over so to be in that island, right? I'm assuming. Right? Um, I, I doubt no, it. I, no? doubt. I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> But the people there were great as well. Um, they were so welcoming, and everyone was just really nice. How was the food? The food is really good. Yeah, my favorite was the bulgogi, which is this Korean beef. Really good. But nothing compared to, like, Puerto Rican food, right? Oh, no, nothing compared <laughs> to that. <laughs> well, now that we're on the food topic. Ah, right, here we go. Here we go. You know, you being here, you know, you're a little bit more up north, but have you tried Cuban food? I'm, I'm assuming you have. Oh, of course, yeah. What do you like better, girl? I mean... Oh, <laughs> I'm going to spot. I'm going to spot. I have to go with my Puerto Rican. Oh, okay. oh, no, 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 no. I, I gotta disagree. I can respect. I gotta that. I can respect disagree. That. I, I found out Puerto what? Rico one the time. Coffee's is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I competed at Puerto Rico one time, and I was I had a hard time eating. Oh, <laughs> yeah. really? Yeah, I don't like pork. Although that's a oh, Cuban yeah. thing too. Yeah, but you guys have the yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean the food is very similar. I think a lot of all the Caribbean islands have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean Cubans eat pork. Every a day. lot of rice, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the rice and beans I was cool with. Yeah. But yeah. you guys don't say frijoles. You guys say uh, gandule. Gandule. Gandula. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gandule is the peas. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Abichuela, okay. the Dominicans be using. Oh, and abichuela yeah, yeah. con arrocito. <laughs> now, that, that was fire. That was fire. Yeah. But let's talk about now your pro career. You turn pro. You've had pro f- four pro fights. Decisions, easy decisions, all four. Um, but you stated that you want to have you want to fight for a title late this year, next year. How come you're fast tracking it? Um, well, one thing is I don't want to be boxing forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think I have the amateur background to be able to fast track it. Um, you know, just having that experience, I think I'm able to do it. And just the whole reasoning of not wanting to do this forever. So, so the champion, well, one of the champions in your weight class with two titles, you fought her like four times or more, yeah. Marlon Esparza. Yeah. How do you... Mm. It would be great to be able to get a fight with her, especially not on the amateur scoring system. Um, but that's something we're working towards. Whoever has the titles at our way, I think there's another, a Mexican girl yeah, as a Mexican well, team. and then a girl from Argentina. Mm-hmm. Um, so whichever one we can go for first, we're just going to go for it. Yeah, the Argentina has the IBF and the Mexican has the WBO. Yeah, so the thing with the Argentina girl, and I was just talking about this <laughs> with my coach, is she doesn't fight out of Argentina. So she's there holding the belt. And hostage. You, she's holding it hostage with Argentinian judges and things like that. So we're probably going to have to somehow force her yeah. to the States where it would be a bigger fight. That would be cool if you can get those two titles and then Marlon and you can meet later exactly. on and make it like a blockbuster thing. Exactly. You know? But I'm looking to fight in between 112 and 118. I think even though I, I don't get so heavy, I go up to like 120, 122 the most. Really? Yeah. Um, so you could go to 108, 106, or whatever. Uh, uh, I don't know nah, if I could. Too much. I think you could. <laughs> I disappear. I already look like I'm sick at 112. <laughs> nah, nah, you don't look, you look, you look good. Nah, you look feeling nah. good. Thank you. Um, I know my coach has mentioned that. I'm like, coach, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to 108 at 106. That's too small. But yeah, so anywhere between 112 and 118, I think I'd be able to fight in that division, especially 118 with my height compared to the girls. So it would it would make up for it. In 2022, you only fought once. Why was that? It was very hard to get fights. Um, we were having opponents drop out. We were having shows cancel. Um, it was such a frustrating thing for me because I would start camp and I'd be like towards the end of the camp. There was one time like a week before the fight, we found out they, the whole show was canceled. Mm. Then the second time around. So then I go back into training camp. I don't have time to like bring myself back down to rebuild again. Um, went into ca- training camp again another three, two or three months, and then again uh, the opponent dropped out or they couldn't find an opponent. So we had like three fights canceled on us. 
you fought you fought under the top rank banner once or twice yes. are you still with or not so really? i'm not signed with anybody right now just yeah. have my manager peter khan uh, i'm not sure if you guys ever met peter we haven't met him but yeah we because of aaron i oh, okay yeah so and um, Xander. he's just really good on getting me on these good cards so i fought on triller i fought on mm -hmm. top rank i fought on match room um, and he, you know, he pushes for me to be on those cards. He thinks I deserve to be on those cards. We haven't figured out which promotional company we want to sign with yet. So that's kind of what we're working on right now. But until then, we're just going to keep trying to get those big cards. For sure. The Puerto, uh, the top rank card was cool because it was during Puerto Rico weekend mm -hmm. in New York City. And, you know, the Puerto Rican Day Parade is the biggest parade in New York City. A lot of people don't know that. It's bigger than the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade, big, bigger than St. Patrick's Day Parade. It's like a huge deal. So it was really fun to... You fought at the Garden. And I fought at the Garden, yeah. Uh, All these obstacles happened to you in 2022, you know, not getting your fights, people pulling out. How do you stay consistent and motivated to keep going? It's a struggle, <laughs> let me tell you. Um, I've always been disciplined, and I think that's what keeps me there. I've never thought, like, I never needed some sort of external mo motivation to keep me going. I just know that this is my job, and this is what I have to do to get what I want. So um, I think that's what kept me there. But tr trust me, it was like every day I'd go to the <laughs> gym, look at Coach, I'm like, Coach, I'm quitting. He's like, shut up. You're not quitting. I was like, Coach, I'm fucking quitting. <laughs> How many? By Coach, you mean Javier, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah he's fed up with me saying that. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually like, People don't know, but he's actually a really good person. Like, yeah, like, he's he's quiet, but he's a really he's good person. Really, quiet. I have a little story that if he ends up watching this, I okay. know I know he'll remember this. But one time, I trained with him and Xander for like very little, but like a month probably, mm -hmm. a month or two, and they put me to spar with a heavyweight. Uh -huh. I was weighing like one fifty at the time. I was fighting at one forty, and but you know, obviously the heavyweight was supposed to take it easy. I mean, but we started like going at it, like, and but the dude was, you know, obviously the heavyweight was starting to like. Her, you know, you'll catch right. her shots and you can feel it like in your arms. And you know, he jumped in the ring and was like, What the fuck are you doing? Like, you know, if you want, if you're gonna be like this, I'll kick your ass out of the gym right now. And like, yeah, I for, since that day, I was like, Damn, this guy's real, like, he's a good person, you yeah. know, because like a lot of other coaches that you know, well, I let you die there when I have you know, I have a lot of fights already, so they already know, like, Oh, he, 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 right. he'll survive, you know, right, so right. he actually stepped in there and like I respected him. No, Javier's a great guy in and out. Um, yeah. of the gym he's very quiet but when you get to mm. know him he opens up he's funny uh he jokes t too many dad jokes <laughs> 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 too many corny dad jokes but he is he's awesome how did you guys meet uh we met through peter when peter? i came to train yeah we've met before in the amateurs and seen each other at tournaments but we didn't know each other uh, like on a deeper level so when i came here i just fell in love with him in the gym and everybody there were you looking at other trainers though besides him at the time um, I wasn't looking at any other trainers. Um, I, I didn't even know I was looking for him, you know? Mm. <laughs> it just happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I just needed, like, a change. And when my friend invited me over, I was just like, all right, whatever, let's do it. And then it was just, like, after, like, the third session, I was like, all right. Because power workers. Dope. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like training with him. That's pretty dope. cool, though, that, you know, you, you get to train alongside your Puerto Rican so mate, um, Xander Zayas, man. How, how's that work like? Like, you being next to, you know, the next superstar of Puerto Rico. Forget about how does that work. I right, keep it a buck. Don't, don't, keep it a buck. How good is he? Uh, Xander's really good. So I, I've actually known Xander since he was young. So he was on the junior national team and we sparred when he was my size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when he had yeah. the blue hair probably, yeah. right? Yeah, back in the days. Little, um, the man bum, bum yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I've known Xander for a very long time. When we first met, he was a kid, you know? We have pictures next to each other and we're the same size. And um, he's always been a good fighter. And it, it's great watching him in the gym because because he's so young, you just keep watching him get better and better and you see the level change, you know what I mean? With young fighters like that. But Xander's a good fighter. Um, he's very focused for somebody his age, very disciplined. And... Um, you can't slack around him because he'll call you out. That's yeah. good. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, that's why the environment's so good in our gym. I think we kind of all do that for each other. Everyone stays on their toes because somebody's watching you. He's really honest, too. I remember one time we went to go weigh each other, and I was fighting at 140. I weighed like 155. And I was like, yo, tell Coach I went 150. He was like, I'm not lying for you. <laughs> I was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, he's like that. Yeah. Um, he he won't lie for you. He'll make sure you, you yeah. do the right thing. So. And that goes to show you him being so young, his mind, how it is. Right, it's... right. He has great parents, and mm -hmm. um, I think that that's what contrib contributes to it. And then having Javier by, him side, by his side. Javier's been training him since he was a little kid, so. 
Yeah, he has the right mind, but he also has the right people around him. Right, You know, right. he has that character of a champion. Yeah, yeah. You know, that consistency and that discipline is really what builds champions. It, it, that's very true. So, mm -hmm. he has that going for him. So Well, we're already in 2023. We already know you how to fight. When's the next fight, champ? Next Talk fight is in March. I do have the date, but I can't fully announce it yet. But we will be fighting in March, and then we're looking to fight again in June. March, do you know where? Uh, Maybe Florida. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> when we out there, we'll, we'll you know we'll show love support. Yeah, yeah. You guys have to come out. Are we gonna see a knockout or what? Are you gonna knock her out? So I'm never. So I'm still figuring out figuring myself out as a pro in the ring. Um, you know, and I'm noticing every fight that I fight, it's getting better and better, and it's just all about getting comfortable in there. So I'm not the type of fighter like I'm gonna go knock her out. I've you know doing this for so long that's just never on my mind. It's always just win. Right. Just win whichever way you can. I can't even tell you how I'm gonna fight. Like I can't even tell you my game plan. My it's just to win however I can win. Yeah, just adapt. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, and and, and the knockout punch comes there, or with whether you hear her, her or not. Right, it but comes, I do want out. one. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see? Yeah, you want to feel it? Like yeah. yeah you wanna... My last fight. So my last one was an eight rounder. And um, I just felt myself every round feeling more comfortable. And I feel like if I had just two more rounds, Get out of it was a chance. I, I think I could have broke, broke her down because I felt her coming down and me just like elevating. You know what I mean? Like kind of like chopping down the tree, uh, you even stated, though she was short. <laughs> you stated that you want to campaign from 112 to 118. Yeah. But um, how many weight classes do you want to go through? Or is just that one eighteen through one eight? I mean, one twelve through one eighteen, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm older right now, so I I don't think I can go any higher than that. Like I'm I'm full, I'm fully grown. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Um, it it is hard for me to pack on weights. I know this is a weird thing, but um, it's hard for me to pack on weight. Um, so I think I in between there, one twelve, one fifteen, one eighteen, I'd be able to fight in. That's, and that's, I'm trying that's to, pretty good. I'm trying to do it with all in a short amount of time. I mean, if you can become two weight world champion, three weight, that's yeah, that's big. I'll take it. <laughs> I want to take it back really quick to when you were 21. So obviously, you start the boxing gym. You know, you don't really know anything about boxing. Did your parents ever put any big fights when you were growing up? Like so Tito Trinidad, Cotto, right. Hector, Macho Camacho. Right. So I did know about boxing. I just didn't know how to fight. Mm. Uh, at least not in a boxing ring. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, growing up in a Puerto Rican household, we watched the big fights at home. You know, um, my uncles loved watching it and things like that. I remember watching De La Hoya versus Trinidad mm. and how happy my household was, <laughs> even though I think De La Hoya won that fight. But... It was a great fight, and I, do, I that's one of the memories that I do have of watching boxing as a kid. Yeah, he gave that fight away, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who's your favorite Puerto Rican fighter of um, at that time? Oh, I mean... Yeah, Cotto. All, well, all overall. time, yeah, probably overall. Benitez. Mm, okay. Mm. Yeah, um, I love Miguel Cotto, not because of his style, just of the way he carries himself and his demeanor in and out the ring. Um, I love that about him. I love Trinidad. Um, he's just... He's a fun, he looks like a fun kind of guy, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, probably those are my favorite fighters. Camacho, too, is a good, a good Camacho, legend. Camacho, oh, my God. He, he was so he good. He switched boxing, yeah. Very, very yeah. entertaining. Very entertaining. He he fought in the New York Golden Gloves as mm -hmm. a kid as well. So mm. he was, like, one of the fighters I watched. When I started boxing, I would look up fighters, and he was one of them that I would look up. Have you met Cotto? Trinidad and any I, I met Cotto. A few times. How was that? Uh, he's very quiet, very nice, humble kind of guy. Oh, he's a serious guy. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. You, if you didn't mention Cotto, Zan did be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> That's his all-time favorite, right? No, no, yeah. I love Cotto. <laughs> We're talking about now. What kind of fighters do you like now? Who are your top guys right now? Give me three. Ooh, Shakur well, Stevenson. Guys, not good. Yeah, of course. Give okay. me three guys. I love Shakur. He's your first then? Um, yeah, he's probably the top one, top one. Of course, wow. I love Xander. But, <laughs> okay, okay. But Xander still got a little okay. left to, you know, to okay, be on that. Okay, so yeah. So Shakur, I love Lomachenko. And I love, um, oh, ooh, what's his name? Uh-oh. Oh, this uh -oh. One, is, this oh one. This um, might be entertaining. No, <laughs> what's his name? He beat Canelo. Oh, Bebo. Bebo, Bebo. Bebo. I love Bebo. Bebo's I good. love his uh, okay. his style. And I love his discipline in the ring. You know, yeah. he sticks to his game plan the whole fight. He doesn't need to show off or anything. And, those are the kind of fighters that I like. Yeah, he's very disciplined. You can yeah. tell. You can see it. I mean, even if he gets hit, he doesn't lose his, his right. mind in there. Right. Even if he, yeah, gets hit, gets tired, he's still there, you know? Right. So. He's pretty nasty. I, I'm kind of mad that he beat Canelo, but I'm yeah. a big Canelo fan. I think Canelo's going to work for me. Too. But... I like Canelo, too, but I'm a fan of Bevo. Yeah, Bevo's fire. Bevo's fire. You stated that you don't want to be in boxing forever. I mean, 
Well, hold on, chat. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't want to interrupt you. You got to give me three girls. Oh, that's right. Okay. You got to give me, come yeah, on. You yeah, can't yeah. leave the girls out. All come right, on. I got to go with my girls. Um, I love uh, Clarissa, of course. I love Michaela. Um, I love Amanda Serrano. She's killing you right she now. She is. And, she's um, tough. She's really I, tough. Pro- those are probably my top three. Um, some coming up fighters. There's this girl from the UK. Her name is Caroline Dubois. Her, bro- her brother was is a pro fighter yeah, as well. Danny Dubois. Yeah. yeah, so she's a really good fighter. I I watched her when she was in, like a youth in the amateurs, mm-hmm. and I seen her fight, and I was like, wow, this girl's going to be good. So. I know you're very humble, <laughs> but if you could call somebody out right now, who would it be? Um, a little shot fire, you know, a little, a little shot. Let's see, let's see. I know there's fighters that when I watch them fight, I'm like, oh, I want to fight that girl. <laughs> so give me one. Give me one right now. I'm trying know. to think. I'm trying to think. Um, you know who I would like to fight? I would like to fight Bridges. Ebony Bridges. The, I think. Oh, from I, that room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think our styles would make for a great fight. Um, me being a boxer and he, her being a brawler. She has some power to her. Yeah, she, she, does. Has, she has some power and she keeps getting better with each fight that comes. She's I at 112? No, she's at 118. Okay. Yeah, yeah. At 112, I will call out that Argentina girl just to pull her out of her country. Because <laughs> right. it kind of pisses me off that she keeps it there. Right. You, oh. Do you know her name? No, I don't. Why don't you <laughs> go over there and take it from her? Yeah. Um, I mean, if the opportunity ever presents itself and it's, you know... Do you mind going over there out of sea, uh, out of out of the seas? You know, like uh, uh, no, I don't mind. I would love to fight in the UK for sure. Um, women's boxing there is huge. Is huge. Growing up, boxing there is huge. Yeah, period. boxing there is huge. But the way they support the, their women fighters and it's it's really it's on another level. Yeah, but that's oh. one thing we're missing in this nation as a I whole. Think though so. they support boxing there as a whole, like as over here, you don't really support not, not even male boxing. Like right. it's not really as supported here as it is in the UK and right. So, but yeah, no, I I hear you. I mean, I would love to fight there. I could have had the chance. Yeah, that's super. Ask cool. a question. Oh, the one that, that, the one that you. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Okay, what do you oh. ask? I was gonna, no, I was gonna ask oh. you. I was gonna ask you. You're 40 now, um, and you stated you didn't want to box forever. So, yeah. how many years more, or do you think you have left in the sport of boxing, competing? Okay, so I I don't think I'd be able to say that just because I I'm very present with myself. I can decide tomorrow, like I'm I'm done with this, you know, and that's right. how I try to be all the all the time you know i thought i was going to stop boxing in 2016 and i'm still here so it's, it's not something i can say you don't look 40 by the way Thank i you. have to put that out there <laughs> I, had to, I had to i had to you don't you don't you, don't. you, don't. you, you know don't. what i i love being 40 i love getting older i, I feel like i get smarter i care less about shit and it's just a good <laughs> feeling what's that thing about wine the the fame the uh, she ages like fine wine. yeah there you go oh, so maybe you. that's what it is thank you but, but you said smarter it's the wise you you know you're much wiser now that's, yeah. that's for sure yeah. yeah you know that's that's gonna come you know do you have any routines that you can show the ladies out here any routines i don't know like any train. soaps you use any I train don't. train train I, all train. i do is drink a lot of water um, I don't have any like um, specific routine that I do with my face or creams like that. I just put sunscreen on and drink a lot of water. I got a little good question for you. So for the girls that are looking at this interview, that they want to become fighters, and then they have you know their friends, their family members in their ears, oh, you're a lady, you shouldn't be doing contact sports. What encouragement can you give them? To ignore the noise, because I've heard that so many times, especially early on when I first started and when women's boxing wasn't like so big. You just have to ignore it and do what you want, because I know for myself, if I'm not doing what I want, I'm not happy, you know. So I would just say ignore the noise. And keep pushing. Follow your dreams. Keep pushing. Keep pushing every single day. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. How much bigger do you think women's boxing is going to get? It's gotten bigger over the years. I think it's going to keep going and it's going to keep getting bigger as long as we keep promoting ourselves and having promoters and and people like you guys having us on these podcasts and you know it takes it takes an army, right? Right. Um as long as that keeps going it's just going to keep getting bigger and one thing that's great right now is that the best are fighting the best in the women's division and I think that's what's changing the game. And the men are not I, I didn't say that. No, I'm we'll, saying we'll, that. I'm yeah. a guy. I can we'll say, say that it. shit. We'll and say, the yeah. men are not. Only uh, Kayla Plant and David Benavides. Uh, and Canelo. That. And Canelo. No, it's <laughs> Canelo, yeah. Okay. <laughs> they going to 175 to fight Bebo. That, that speaks volumes. I know, I know, I know. All right, shit, man. I, I, need, I need to see him with Benavides. Well, I got you, though. This is going to be a good question. Okay. I hope you choose right, though, because I know what he's going to ask. Uh, Spence or Crawford? 
Oh, this is so I'll Put you on the spot. Don't, don't do it because you were in the team with him. Be honest. Yeah, be, yeah, yeah, be honest. Oh, my gosh. I, okay, it, it really is a hard... Of course, it is. It's, you it's know, hard. with um, the athleticism, the athleticism of, of Crawford and then the discipline that Earl, Earl has, it's, it's really hard to choose. Now, if you ask me who do I want to win, mm -hmm. I can tell you. But I can't, I wouldn't be able to say who. It's just, it's so hard. I mean, it 50-50. Yeah. Well, it's not. It's 70-30, but... <laughs> Yo, Eric Spence, if you're watching this, you know, I'm riding with you 100%. <laughs> and you're going to take that dub. Nah. Let's go. Shout nah. out to Crawford, too, bro. Nah, you I know think... what? Hey, I'm going to take this by myself. I guess both of y'all brothers are going to stop him late. That's it. Oh, you crazy. Nah, get, get, out, get, out, get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. That was bold. I am, man. I, I believe in what I say, and I'm going to stand on it, bro. <laughs> Carl is gonna stop him late. How well, they, uh, often do you guys argue about stuff? Uh, every day. Uh, yeah, every day. <laughs> <laughs> I can't yeah, fucking yeah. stand him. <laughs> nah, but look, we respect you a lot. You're a legend in women's bo amateur boxing. You're bona fide legend. You already you already have records, world medals. What is your goal to in in pro boxing? What what what's you know? Um. So as far as like. Of course, I want to win a world title, defend it once or twice, or whatever it is, or go for two titles. Um, but I have some goals outside of boxing. Well, not outside of boxing, but I think boxing will help me with. Um, and a lot of it is giving back to the community. Um, love to give back more to, for, to the amateur team that I used to fight for as an amateur, um, New York Cops and Kids, which is a nonprofit organization in New York that takes kids off the street and into the boxing gyms. Um, would love to be able to give back more to that because without that program, it would have been hard for me to get to national tournaments. You know, they funded me throughout my entire career. Pat Russo, who, um, who used to work for the NYPD, he it's his program, and without him, I wouldn't. It, it would have been hard to create the success that I have created for myself. Um, and then other things, I would love to give back. Also, to one of my goals is to give back to the. Uh, Puerto Rican national team, especially the women's team, help them somehow get funded because I would would love to see Puerto Rico on the medal podium and at the uh, at the Olympics, and it's gonna take money to do that. Right. Um. So those are just some of my goals that I have. What other goals do you have once you retire? Uh, once I retire, I don't know a lot. I work in real estate, which I love so much. Um. So I'll probably transition more towards that. Of course, I would love to commentate and things like that. I'm I'm still debating whether I want to be a coach or not. Um, <laughs> you know, I've had I've had trained people throughout the years. I've opened up a gym in California before, and during that time, I didn't love it so much because I was still traveling a lot, and so it was a little hard for me. Um, I won't say I will be a coach, but I won't say you won't. I won't. That I won't. <laughs> um, you said you're in real estate, so but and I I did see an interview where you said you do short term rentals. You're still in that. Yeah. So, so you're doing like Airbnb and stuff. Yeah. So I manage a bunch of short term rentals um, here in in Florida. Uh, I used to manage in Columbus, Ohio, when I lived there. I did it in Colorado. Did it in California. Did it in New York City. So now I'm just building here again. Um, was also a real estate agent as well. So you're going on is to or later is to get your a lot of properties under you, like yeah. your own properties. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there's different avenues. I, I want to be more in investing. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. But go going to use that to get me there. You don't got any modeling agencies looking at you? Uh, no, I can't model for shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like in front of a camera, I'm so awkward. Like, nah. I'm just like, <laughs> nah, no, 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 no. I'm gonna say this right now. And I'm sorry to all the guys that have came, but you've been one of the most entertaining people we've had. Oh, for sure. You. I mean, maybe it's just because you're a woman and <laughs> guys, yeah. are, guys are ugly to look at, but. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Well, Calvin Klein, um, I don't know, girl, girl things. I don't know, shot, you know. So I actually have to do a photo shoot like this week coming up and I'm so nervous about it. And I told like the photographer, I'm like, you're gonna have to like tell me how to pose because I will just like. <laughs> I, I just I'm not good at modeling. It's easier than fighting, that's for sure. Yeah. So you'll be good. I don't think so. I'd rather get punched in the face. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, 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 that's no. because you're comfortable. Yeah. No, no, no. Watch when you start taking the pictures. Yeah. You start, oh, this is fun. Well, and, then, and then you get the picture. You're like, damn, damn I, look I look good. good. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you start feeling yourself. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Ask her. Ask her to sign. I need I need oh. that blessing of your signature, champ. Wherever okay. you want it. Oh, but when you come back, you gotta come back with all the belts. You gotta come back yeah, over here. We gotta course. talk about it. 
Uh, it was a pleasure you. having you here. It was a pleasure was. being here. Thank you guys for having me. And this was so much fun for me. So. Oh, thank you, Chan. Thank <laughs> I was you. A little it nervous. was fun for us, too. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect. You so. nervous. We're the ones that are nervous <laughs> interviewing you, the chat. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, like I said before, you've been on big shows already. <laughs> shit. I know, but that's where I'm comfortable. <laughs> true, 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 true. Any message any messages to um any messages to your fans that are watching? Any Just, um thank you guys for always supporting me. Um I have like the greatest followers ever. I don't get heckled or anything. Nobody ever says anything bad to me on my comments, so let's keep it that way. <laughs> but um thank you guys for always supporting me and my friends and family. And if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram at Christina Cruz Box. Yeah, man, I was going to say, hey, give your handle and all that. Uh, she's she's on the ball. She's I'm media. It. She's ready. She's, she's media ready, ready man. <laughs> Let's see who who do we got here? Oh, this Jose Vargas, Luis Ortiz. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have a lot. Michelle, Michelle Ali, Ali, Michelle Rivera. Yeah, Ali. Oh, sweet. Aaron Aponte, Luis oh. Melendez, oh, okay. Chucho. Nice. Oh, a lot, yeah, a lot of Puerto Ricans. Good fighter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, but, guys. Yeah. Thank you, champ. It was a good episode. Hey, it was. And <laughs> thank you so much for coming again and making the time to come over here. And um, for everybody that's seen this episode, I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Let's go, Eagles. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>